The Challenge of the Yukon. Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his Wonder Dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. In a small, garishly furnished walk-up apartment on a nondescript Seattle street, two men sat talking. Blackie Lewis was the older of the two, and his face wore an expression of impatience as he glanced from the cards he was cutting with practiced fingers. I tell you, Blackie, there's not a thing I can do about it. He won't change his mind. You said that before. You've been getting your cut on everything. It's easy money, kid. Sure, sure it is. Or was. Because I'm going with him. Look, what's got into you anyway? You going sentimental? So the two of you have stuck together all this time. You're orphans, ain't you? Both you and him have made your own way. You don't know that sap of thing. Don't call that a sap, Blackie. Maybe he doesn't see a lot of things the way I do. But he's not dumb, see? Think that stuff in the newspapers on the level? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, sure I do. They brought a ton of the real McCoy in on that boat, didn't they? Just think, Blackie. A ton of gold. Mm. Yeah, I am thinking. I never heard of the place before, but there's no reason why we couldn't... Hmm. Couldn't what? Yeah, maybe I was wrong. Things haven't been so good here lately. The last brush I had with the law was a little too close. I don't get what you're driving at. Let me see that paper. Mm. How soon are you two leaving? Oh, not for a couple of weeks. Three at the most. Why? Kid, I'm going to meet you there. And let's see. Yeah, I'll meet you in Dawson. Yukon Territory. Several months passed. That Inspector Maynard's office at headquarters of the Northwest Mounted Police, Sergeant Preston stood in front of a map of the territory, listening to his superior officer. Unfortunately, we have only the description of the robbers which the bank clerk supplied before he died. And that won't be a great deal of help to you since the bandits wore bandanas over their faces. Here you are. Hmm, you're right. Doesn't say much. All you can get out of this is that there were two men. Yes. If they're responsible for all of this murder and robbery, they've got quite a score behind them. It's your job to see that they settle their score, whatever it is, Sergeant. I'll start to work on it immediately, sir. Uh, you think you'll need any assistance on the case? Well, King and I uh, usually... That's right. Uh, I forgot for the moment. King's your assistant, eh? I never did understand that. But handle this any way you like. Just so as those men are brought to justice. Good luck. Thank you, sir. I hope I won't need it. Thus began many days on the trail for Sergeant Preston and the great dog King. They stopped at the towns where the crimes had been committed, pausing only long enough for the Monty to ask questions and then move on. The trail ended abruptly at Burgess City. While the policeman made that settlement his temporary headquarters, he searched painstakingly for clues of the two men he sought. Meantime, at a small cabin several miles north of the sprawling boom town, Edward Warner knelt on the floor in front of Kathy Merrill to unfasten the thongs on her snowshoes. I'm awfully glad I met you on the trail, Kathy. I don't often have the pleasure of walking with you. Well, good heavens. I think that's more words than you've said to me since the day I met you. Well, I, I've been meaning to tell you how grateful Johnny and I are to you. I mean your father, for the way he's been to us. Oh, nonsense. Father likes you. Otherwise, he wouldn't have told you about that strip of land next to ours. He staked a claim on this property that's really very worthwhile. But he thinks you two will make a strike on your land that may be every bit as good. Well, I hope he's right. Only it's Johnny he likes. Johnny's a great guy. You know, I've known him since we were kids. Why, I, Honestly, I remember... Honestly, Eddie, don't you ever talk about yourself? Huh? <laughs> well, there isn't much to tell about me, but... Oh, then... Eddie. Well, what's wrong? Nothing, nothing at all. 
Just the wall of Jericho would have to fall down in front of you before you'd see what I... Oh, never mind. As Eddie Warner walked from Merrill's cabin toward his own, Kathy watched him from the window with an exasperated frown on her face that softened to a smile. Bending his head against the wind, Eddie was haunted by a mental picture of the girl, her hair, her eyes, the timber of her voice. He shook his head and walked faster. Later that evening in Burgess City, Johnny Patterson stood at the bar in the Golden Nugget Cafe. Blackie Lewis was beside him, but the younger man looked morosely at the contents in the glass he held and instead of listening to his companion. So while I was playing poker this afternoon, they told me about the Mountie in town. Seems like he's... Say, what's eating you anyway? Blackie, my trigger finger's getting itchy again. Oh, so that's it, huh? (laughs) And what's the deal? You know Merrill? Sure. He's the one that tipped you off to the land out there, isn't he? Yeah. Well, so far, we ain't turned up much gold, though. But he's got more of it in that mine of his than you or me ever saw before. Hmm. We could move in on that. What about this cow of yours? You'd have a hard time pulling anything with him around. Well, the Mountie's in town, isn't he? So, if it'd look like Eddie was the one who killed Merrill... You mean frame him? Why did sudden change your heart? I thought you and him... Had... I get it. You get what? Listen, kid. Don't try to fool me. I've been around a long time. There's only one thing that can bust up a friendship between two men, and that's a woman. So, well... (laughs) You're jealous of him, huh? Jealous? (laughs) He's too dumb to open his mouth. That don't seem to make any difference to her. Anytime the three of us are together, it's him she listens to. When she can get him to talk. No, I'm not jealous. Just... Just clearing away the earth, that's all. All right, you can count me in. Yeah, but there's one thing, kid. With the money in town, I'm a little leery of keeping them money bags and pokes at the hotel. Can you take my share and keep it with yours till he clears out? Sure. I'll take it back with me. What about your pal? Any danger of him finding it? Don't worry. I've got it hid where he'll never think of looking. Besides, we won't have him to consider much longer. Now, you come out to the cabin with me tonight. The two of us will work on a plan. I've already got an idea, but I'll need you to back me up. So come on, let's not waste time. It was mid-afternoon of the next day. A light snow fell. And inside Merrill's cabin, Johnny Patterson leaned back in his chair to look at the old man, who was examining some samples of ore. So, uh, Kathy went in to get the supplies. I told her she better not waste any time getting back here. You never know when these light snows will turn fierce. That's right. I've been mighty happy since you came up here, my boy. It's company for both Kathy and me. Used to be pretty lonely. Yeah? But it's more pleasant now. And I wish you all the luck in the world with you. Johnny! Johnny! This revolver's loaded, Mr. Merrill. Johnny! Have you lost your mind? What's the meaning of this? Put down that gun I... Not before I put one of these slugs right through your heart, old timer. You, you must be insane. Johnny, please listen to reason. <laughs> It was much later that night, and in the cabin where Johnny Patterson and Edward Warner made their home, Sergeant Preston looked from the two young men to Blackie Lewis, finally at Kathy Merrow. The girl's face was white, her eyes red from weeping, but she sat straight and still, making an effort to control her sorrow. King lay on the floor, his head resting between his paws while he watched the proceedings alertly. This bullet was fired from a revolver that belongs to you, Warner? Yes, the revolver is mine, but I didn't have it with me today. I went hunting and took Johnny's rifle. Johnny Patterson shot a quick glance at Eddie. It seemed to say so much. It seemed to say, so you want him to believe you were out hunting. All right, I'll back you up. Preston noticed the look and turned to Johnny. He took your rifle? Uh, Oh, yes, yes, yes. He he took the rifle, Sergeant. And you? Uh, Blackie and I tried to do some work on the claim today. The snow came up, so we quit and we came inside. Spent the afternoon playing two-handed poker, as a matter of fact. I see. You didn't go to Merrill's cabin at all today. I guess it's my fault that we didn't, Sergeant. I was pretty anxious to see this claim Johnny told me about. King turned his attention from the small group in front of him and looked instead at a corner of the room. His eyes were cocked forward eagerly as he raised his head. Well, Patterson, seems you have someone to back up your alibi. Now, what time did your friend leave to go hunting? Why, uh, uh, well, I don't exactly remember. 
But he did go hunting. Uh, Warner, you were alone most of the day. With the snow to cover your tracks, it would be impossible to determine whether or not you went to Mr. Merrill's cabin. Now, the fact remains that you went hunting, but you didn't bring anything in. I'm afraid I'll have to put you under arrest. Arrest? Yes, for investigation of murder. Say, listen, what's that noise? Well, I don't know. Sounds like a scraping of some sort. Probably a rat, Mr. Lewis. We were troubled with a few of them at the cabin until Dad got rid of them with traps. <laughs> it looks like King discovered the rat. Sergeant Preston turned a glance at King, and from the corner of his eyes, he saw one of the floorboards on which the dog had placed the weight of his front paws went down. And then banged as King leaped back with amazing agility. Come on, get away from there. Sergeant, call him over here. That's a fine dog like that shouldn't be chasing rats. Oh, wait a minute. That's a loose floorboard. You ought to nail that down, Patterson. You have to twist your ankle pretty badly stepping on the Well, I'll fix it, Sergeant. There's no need for you to... Johnny Patterson left the sentence unfinished, for he saw the Mountie reach into the cavity in the floor, and quickly he reached for a revolver, swinging around to cover the occupants of the room. King had not seen, but he had sensed the action, and he turned looking at the man, waiting tensely for some sign from Preston. You can drop what you got in your hand, Sergeant. So, money bags from the bank in Southboro. Yeah, and a lot more pokes in there without names on them. It ain't gonna do you any good. It's too bad that dog of yours got nosy. Get his gun, Blackie. Johnny. Johnny, you mean you've had those there all this time? With the murders you've got behind you, Patterson, I guess one more wouldn't make any difference to you. And your guess would be right, too. Sure, I killed Merrill. Blackie and me was going to move in on a claim. I figured on Mary Cassie once said he was out of the way. Mary, you! You murderer! I now don't be so hasty, baby, because you're going with me. I'm going to kill you, Sergeant. And you too, Eddie. By the time you're found, Blackie and me will be out of the Yukon. I won't go a step with you, not a step. You've got everything pretty neatly planned out, Patterson. There's just one thing you've overlooked. Yeah, what's that? The same dog who uncovered your loot. Eddie King! Oh, oh, that dog away! Oh, oh, maybe I'm handcuffed. Get him away! Get him away! Oh, oh, oh. No. Try to break out of that hole, Lewis. Now no. drop that gun, Patterson. Drop that gun. Let go of my arm. I'll... Oh, oh. Get that dog away from my ankle. Get him away. All right, King. Get him away. Now, you're under arrest, both of you. You unlock those handcuffs, will you, Miss Merrill? Here's the key. I certainly will. Oh, Eddie, I'm so glad. I, I couldn't believe you'd done it. You never opened your mouth to say you didn't. I couldn't believe myself when I saw Johnny didn't believe me. He put on a good act, Eddie. Pretending anxiety to back up your story, and at the same time tearing it apart with a tone of his voice. Eddie. Eddie, won't you ever say it? Won't you ever ask me? Why, I... Oh, Kathy. And now, Patterson, you and Blackie are headed for jail. But you can take it from me. You won't stay there long. You've both got an appointment with a hangman. <laughs> yes, fella. Thanks to you, the case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. All characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. Bob Height speaking. This program came...